end, the very end of chapter 3, but we're going to start in a couple of verses in chapter 1, 2, and 3. And the, uh, the topic that we're looking at in these last verses is living in the last days. Living in the last days. How, how, what's appropriate, what's the right way for us to live in these last days? Um, chapter 1, one of the main subjects was make sure you're right with God. <laughs> Uh, verse 5, he said, add to your faith virtue, the virtue knowledge, and, and, and so on. And then later in verse 10, he says, uh, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. And then he, he ends the chapter talking about the, the, the precious hope that we have because we have God's word. A more sure than a voice from heaven is the fact that God wrote it down and gave it to us. And then he says in chapter 2, now, Beware, there's been false prophets, there's going to be false teachers, he says in verse 1 of, of chapter 2. And uh, that's, you know, that comes right off of, we're to trust God's word, don't listen to false teachers, trust God's word. And then in, in chapter 3, he looks at answering those false teachers and the scoffers. And uh, verse 2 he's, of chapter 3, he says that, "...ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles." of the Lord and Savior. You know, that's the main answer we have is God has spoken. You know, we have God's word. And uh, as we uh, look tonight, let's start in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Question mark. We're going to st we'll stop reading there. It's hard to read that long of a sentence with a question in your voice. But that's, uh, that's a question. And uh, the question for us tonight there in verse 11 is, since God is going to destroy all of this, now, you can, you can point anywhere. Look at me. You can point anywhere, and that's what's going to be destroyed. <laughs> all right? All of this, the, the skies, the, the earth, it's all going to disappear. He says, uh, uh, seeing that all this should be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be? And then, and then he qualifies it there a little bit. But, uh, you know, the, the thing about this, we don't know when, but we do know what. Right? God's judgment is coming. And he calls us there in verse 11 to holy conversation. That's talking about how you behave. You know, there's never a time when we should do wrong. It's never right to do wrong. And as Christians, God calls us to holy conversation. And he says there as well, godliness. Holy conversation is your behavior. Godliness is your attitude toward God. We should always be reverent toward God. And the appropriate way to live starts with Eager anticipation. Now, that should be a part of our life. Uh, verse 13, he says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Uh, we're not looking back. We're looking forward as Christians. Uh, we, we don't need to be negative. Now, I was just thinking while we were, were singing here, one of the, the thoughts that went through my mind is, you know, we could go through a lot of trouble in the end times. You know, there, there's things coming that as, as it comes closer to the rapture and Jesus coming again, uh, you know, it's happened before, but especially as we get close to, to that day, you know, the, the time when, when all these things he's talking about, uh, there could be some tough times. But we're not looking back, we're looking forward. We're looking to what, what Jesus is, uh, is going to do. And uh, he uses a, a word there, a hasting, verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of, of God. Uh, we're, we're wanting it to come, you know, the sooner the better. And, and the worse it gets, the more encouraged we should be. <laughs> that sounds terrible, doesn't it? But, uh, you know, as the world gets worse, the tendency is to say, oh, man, it's awful. You know, it's, oh, it's terrible. It's, oh, it's really bad. <laughs> and that's just my house, you know. <laughs> now, uh, we look around, you know, and, and we think how bad it is. But that, that should encourage us. We should be thinking, Jesus is coming again, hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord. 
in, in those verses, he has a lot of things where he's talking about looking. Verse 12, looking for and hasting unto. Uh, verse 13, looking for new heavens. Uh, verse 14, wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. Uh, we're looking. Jesus is coming again. Uh, the rapture could be at, at any time, like we read. You know, he's coming like a thief in the night. We don't know when. But uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, he uses that word, caught up. We're going to be raptured. Boom, in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And uh, we comfort each other, he said, with these words. Jesus is coming. And, and the, the day of the Lord follows. You know, the tribulation, the, the millennium, uh, eternity. Uh, the same words he uses here in, um, in Peter. He, he repeats, well, I say he, the, the Lord repeats in, uh, in Revelation when he says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And he talks about that here in, uh, in 2 Peter as, as well. Um, where was it? Verse 13, we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Jesus is coming again. Listen, don't, don't get too attached to this earth. Some of these protesters lately have been gluing themselves to the earth. Oh boy, that's, that's going to be dangerous. <laughs> you don't want to be glued to this earth. Uh, I've, I've got a solution for that problem, but so far nobody's asked me. But anyway, uh, the, the question is, are you ready? He could come today. He could come uh, tonight. We, might, we could not finish this service. You know, Jesus could, could take us out. Are you ready? I'm asking, are you saved? Well, when you, you know, if you were to stand before God today, would God say, welcome home? Or would he say, I'm sorry, I don't know you? Uh, you know, what a terrible thing it would be to hear the word of God and to know that Jesus is coming and to do nothing about it. For Christians, are you serving? You know, we don't know how long we have. And you know, there's a tendency many times to think, now, someday I'll, I'll do this. Someday I'll, I'll read my Bible. Someday I'll, <laughs> listen, today's the day. <laughs> Now's the time. Now, even for young people, you know, there's things you can do. Don't just think, oh, when I'm an adult... Uh, maybe I'll do something. No, start now. Uh, some of the greatest servants of the Lord started when they were young. You know, uh, people like Joseph and, and, and David and Daniel and so on. You know, people in the Bible that uh, God blessed and, and used. Jesus is coming. Are you serving? Turn with me, if you would, to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. This is Paul's testimony. Now, Paul had an advantage over us. He knew when he was going to die. I, I don't know if you know Paul's story, but he was arrested many times uh, for being a Christian and, and for uh, the things that he preached. And eventually they took him and they cut his head off. They killed him. And uh, this was the last book he wrote, 2 Timothy here. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, verse 6, he says, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I don't know if he knew the exact time or if they'd said, you know, we're going to execute you on the 12th of August or, you know, whatever. But he knew that this was it. I have fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, or be, as a result, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also. And what does he say here? That love his appearing. He was hasting unto the day of the Lord. He, he, was, he was ready. He'd done what God had wanted him to do, and he knew his time was up, and he had eager anticipation is what we're talking about. Eager anticipation, looking for Jesus. Uh, we don't know how we'll enter heaven, whether by death or by Jesus coming, but uh, we know as Christians, Jesus is coming. And if you know Christ, you can know that heaven is, is for sure. In fact, the Bible says that heaven is where our citizenship is. Did you know that? As Christians, Philippians 3.20, uh, he uses uh, the, the word there, our conversation is in heaven. If you look that up, it's the word politeuma. I don't know if I'm saying it right. It, it's your politic. It, it's your citizenship. It's your city. Uh, you're represented there. That's, that's your government is in heaven. And our hope will be fulfilled in heaven. You know, what a blessing uh, to know that someday all the things we've ever hoped and dreamed of uh, will be true. And in Colossians chapter 1, verse 5, he says, The hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth 
of the gospel. Uh, one of my favorites on this is Titus 2.13, where he says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. What a blessing. Uh, we should have eager anticipation. That's a, that should be a characteristic of us in these last days. And that's something we'll have to work at. Work at. You, you might want to I almost said get a tattoo. No, that's not it. Yeah, you might want to get a plaque or something that says, it could be today. It could be today. Maybe today. Write yourself a note. You, you know those stick em notes? Put it on your, on your dash. Maybe today. Eager anticipation. So we just don't know. But that's not the only characteristic for us Christians in these last days. God doesn't want us just to sit around doing nothing. You know, you know, it's not like waiting in the doctor's office let me tell you, when you go to the doctor or the dentist, you want to bring something with you, <laughs> something to do, something to read. I find that's a good time to go over my memory verses, you know, go through this and that and the other thing. Uh, that's not what God wants us to be like, just sitting there doing nothing. Have you ever seen a picture of him drilling an oil well? That, that drill's going around and it drill's going around and drill, and they're, you know, they're working, get that drill's going around, and then, boom, the thing bursts open, you know? <laughs> That's the kind of way God wants us to be waiting. Serving. Not only eager anticipation, purposeful service. There in, in 2 Peter, he uses the word diligent. 2 Peter 3 and verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Let's read on. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Boy, even Peter had trouble understanding some of the things Paul wrote. <laughs> which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, under their own destruction. That word rest means distort. They take some, you know, there's some passages that are more difficult than others. And there's people who will purposely twist them, turn them, distort them, trying to, to uh, deceive us. Ye therefore, verse 17, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. So God warns us, uh, we need to be practicing purposeful service in these last days. Be diligent. Uh, do you remember the question there in verse 11? What manner of persons ought you to be? Seeing that all these things are going to be dissolved, what kind of person should you be in these last days? You know, uh, there have been those in the past who've gathered together uh, doing nothing. You know, there's groups of different ones, they, they go up on a hill, and maybe they'll put on white robes, and they'll, they'll sit there and, and wait. Listen, that's not what God calls us to do. We're not in... God's waiting room. We're in God's service room. <laughs> we're, we're here to serve. Now, God's great commission is still in effect. And when you read what Jesus had to say about this kind of thing, uh, when he talks about people who are, who are waiting, he says they, they need to be serving. Matthew 24, he had a story where uh, he, he said, uh, better get chapter 24. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. And the story was about a servant, and they needed to be busy because the master could come back any time. You kids in school, it's like when the teacher leaves the classroom. Listen, you better be good because they could come back any time. You've said it, and we said it when I were kids. Teacher's coming. Oh, get the desks back. You unpile those desks and get them back in, in a row. <laughs> we used to play bumper cars with the desks when the teacher left the room. But we always had a, a spy. So don't, of course, none of you kids would do that because you're good Christian kids. Uh, but he's saying, watch therefore, you know not what hour your Lord doth come. He says, therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Uh, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Uh, he's talking there about serving. In these last days, appropriate living is earnest expectation, but also purposeful service. And you know, there's a motive, because we don't know if this might not be our last day. Yeah, there's, a, there's a stimulus there for us to keep serving the Lord. Uh, we don't give up. Uh, we have a song in our hymnal, we'll work till Jesus comes. 
then we'll be gathered home. That doesn't mean you never take a break or you never have a, have a rest or anything. You, you need to you live life in a normal way in the sense you've you got to go to bed and you've got to eat and, and so on. But we have a motive to keep serving because Jesus could come today. And in verse 14, he, he talks about it when he says, Seeing that you look for such things, be diligent, and here's, here's the motive, that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. When he comes, we're going to give an account. We're his servants. We're going to give an account of, of our life. We need to keep serving the Lord. Uh, we don't know when our time is up, and he wants us to be found of him in peace. You notice that there in verse 14? Be found of him in peace. Now, first of all, that is talking about peace with God. You know, God wants you to know him. Uh, Romans 5.1, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. But you know, God wants you to have peace with people too. Uh, there's saved people, there's lost people. And as much as lieth in me, the Bible says, we need to try and live at peace with people. And uh, particularly in, in our church. You know, there's, there's going to be times when we're going to disagree. Uh, we might disagree with uh, people for various and sundry different reasons. Uh, Romans 14, 19, he says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. Uh, we need to be found in peace. Listen, your church is important. Your church life is important. Uh, God's peace. Uh, we need to be pursuing God's peace in our heart. Uh, tur turn to Philippians chapter 4. You, you probably know these verses, but uh, nonetheless, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. He, he puts it this way, be careful for nothing. <laughs> we, don't, we might not say it that way today, but he's saying, don't worry. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth, passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We need to have, we need to pursue diligently uh, the peace of God in, in our own hearts. And he says, one of the ways you do that is you pray and you turn it over to the Lord. Uh, that's part of, of what we need to be doing in these, these last days. Listen, there may come a time when like, when like Paul, you, you or I end up in prison for being a Christian. Listen, you need to know what to do. You need to be uh, uh, looking forward to Jesus coming again. Listen, if you're in prison and they're torturing you, you're going to think, Lord Jesus, come now. Lord Jesus, come now. You didn't come then. Well, come now. He didn't come then. Well, come now. I mean, you're going to be an anticipating uh, if, if torture is, is what's happening to you. And, and I hope that you'll think, I better pray. Turn this over to the Lord. I better seek God's peace. Uh, that we may be found of him, the Bible says, in peace. Trusting him. Praying. But he also uses another phrase there in Peter when he says, without spot and blameless. Uh, we need to be found of him you might say, with moral integrity, uh, with our life and our character and our reputation, uh, right with God and right before God. Uh, we need to be living for Jesus. Uh, the Bible tells us that when we know that Jesus is coming, it should motivate us to want to be like him. That's found in 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Uh, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, when, when we know he's coming, he says that, that motivates us to, to be like him. We know we're going to see him soon. And we want to be like him. You know, the Bible uses the phrase there in, in verse 14, uh, seeing that you look for such things. You know, while we're looking for such things, Jesus coming, uh, the end times and so on, uh, we need to have right relationships with people as best we can. Uh, we need to live godly lives. Uh, we need to serve the Lord. Uh, in 1 John 2, 28, he says, Abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Uh, it's important. Eager anticipation, uh, purposeful service. And the, the third thing that I think you see here in, at the end of Peter is steadfastness. Just Keep looking. Keep serving. You know, don't give up. Don't just do it for a while. Uh, don't quit. 
Verse 17, there, ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. God calls us to steadfastness, uh, being consistent. Now, we know that salvation is eternal. God calls it eternal life. Uh, we're saved eternally. Well, don't be deceived from that. You know, he uses the term there, rest, in, in verse 16. Don't let somebody distort the scripture and, and try and get you to be um, uh, dissatisfied with what God has done. God offers eternal life. If you have life from God, you have eternal life. Uh, don't be discouraged. Uh, you know, we, uh, we need to be careful that we're, we're steadfast in, in just in our own attitudes toward the Lord. Learn to encourage yourself. Listen, if you're a normal adult, you'll have times. Some of you aren't normal adults, you're kids. <laughs> if you're a normal person, uh, you're going to have times when you're going to get discouraged. I mean, it just happens. You know, you need to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord, in the Lord. Be a leader in that. Uh, help others to do that. But, uh, you, you know, you just can't always count on somebody else being there for you other than the Lord. And, uh, you know, we need to, to uh, be secure in our own salvation. And we also need to be sharing Jesus with others. He uses the, the word there in verse 15, long-suffering. Account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. Uh, I think that harkens back to verse 9, when he says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promises, some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, you, you know, we have eternal life. We, we encourage ourselves in that. But others need eternal life. And God calls us in these last days to continue to be a witness. You know, continue to talk to people of, about the Lord. Be sharing Christ with others. Uh, this could be their last chance uh, to hear. In uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, he says, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Uh, we need to be faithful, uh, not only in, in our, uh, our walk with the Lord, uh, but in sharing that with, with others. As well, we need to be steadfast, just staying with the plain, obvious meanings of Scripture. Uh, we don't need to look for some new message. We don't need to look for, uh, for some, something different. Uh, don't follow the latest book or trend. Uh, I've been around long enough. Man, we see them come and go. Uh, There's some things. I mean, it's all right to... Uh, I remember when everybody had, had buses. Well, that's okay to get out and have buses and bring people in. But I'm talking about doctrinal things and, and attitudes towards Scripture. Uh, have discernment. Second uh, Timothy talks about study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Be steadfast in, in studying and understanding Scripture. Keep growing. We haven't read it yet, but verse 18, he says, Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In these last days, keep growing. Keep reading your, your, your Bible. Keep studying. Uh, in verse 17, he, he talked about being led away and, and falling. Don't be led away. Don't fall. Uh, get into God's Word and, and grow. In uh, 1 Peter 2 and verse 2, uh, you, you know the verse, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. Uh, 2 Peter 1.5, we, we read it once already. Besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness. If these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, listen, we need to be in God's Word. Uh, he's just saying, keep growing. Let me ask you, what takes up your time? You know, there, there's so many things that we, we think, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Um, have, you, have you read the Bible? I, I don't mean have you read bits of it. I mean, have you read the Bible? Have you read it from kiver to kiver, <laughs> from front to back? Uh, we need to be in God's Word. We need to be studying God's Word. There's no excuse for not studying God's Word nowadays. Listen, you can get apps and programs and 
download this and that. Now be careful. Uh, don't get something that somebody said put their ideas in. I, I use a, a thing called Blue Letter Bible. And I can look up any passage and I can uh, hit the strong button. That's a, that's a concordance. And, and then I can look at any word, where, where it is in the whole Bible and what it means. Man, it's, it's, there's no excuse for not studying God's Word. We've got the time, folks. Listen, we all have the same amount of time. And uh, we can give our time to things that will make a difference. Keep, keep growing. Read the Bible. Memorize Scripture. Plan to serve Him. Be at every church service uh, you know, that, that God allows us to have. Be an active part of your, of your church. Keep growing. And then the last thing He says there is, To Him be glory both now and forever. Keep glorifying God. You know, that, that's all part of being steadfast, isn't it? Keep growing. Keep glorifying the Lord. Uh, stay with the, the obvious meanings of Scripture. Keep witnessing. Uh, keep uh, uh, just being secure and having the assurance of, of salvation that, that only God can give. You know, glorifying God is what we're here for. In 1 Corinthians, he says, you're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. But your gods, they, they belong to the Lord. Uh, God is worthy of more than we could ever give Him. You know, we, we sing some of these songs, and doesn't it break your heart to think how, how little, you know, they're just so little we can actually do for the Lord. But we can try to be faithful, and we can love Him. Uh, Jude put it this way, To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Now, that, that should be our heart's desire. Uh, is to, to glorify the Lord. I, I don't know what the future holds. Uh, God does. But uh, living in the last days, I, I don't think it's going to be real easy. I was thinking about it this afternoon, looking back through history, and you know, I read through Scripture, I, I don't guess there's ever been an easy time to live for the Lord. <laughs> you know, you think of some of the people in the Old Testament, the people in the New Testament. But God intends for us to eagerly look for His coming again. That'll motivate us. We need to be excited about the fact that God has told us, you know, I read the back of the book and we win, folks. God has given us something we can, we can look forward to. And we need to be faithfully serving Him. And knowing that, that it's coming to an end should give us a special boost. Uh, keeping our actions and our hearts right. Because uh, we could give an account at any time. Uh, God help us to... Uh, not to be afraid of, of the day in which we live, but to have an eager anticipation of what God has done and is doing and will do. Second uh, Peter 3.11, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Uh, that's God's question to you. That's the question I would put to you tonight. Uh, Jesus is coming again. What kind of person should you be? Verse 14, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. You know, when uh, Paul was confronted by the Lord, his question was, Lord, what would you have me to do? What wilt thou have me to do? And I would encourage you to, to be asking the Lord, Lord, what, do you, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do right now, today, this week, this month, with my life? Uh, Jesus could come today. Glad day. Now let's go to him in, in prayer. With their heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer, maybe you need to trust Christ as your Savior. Uh, maybe you're uh, one who knows about the Lord, but you don't know the Lord. You're not sure if you died, whether you'd go to heaven or hell or what would happen. The Bible says now, today is the day of salvation. Maybe you're a Christian, but you, uh, you, you live in the way of the world. Uh, you're cheating and stealing and lying and swearing and doing all the things that the, that the world does and, and you need to quit. Take it to the Lord. Lord, what would you have me to do? Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, we're grateful that you know us and still love us. And uh, Lord, you know uh, the beginning from the end. Uh, you know when this world will end and, and what comes next and how it works and Father, we're so grateful that we can put ourselves in your hands and, and know that we're safe. Thank you for the, the gift of eternal life. Thank you for the gift of your Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. Now, Lord, help us to honor you. Help us to love you. 
Uh, Lord, whatever comes, help us uh, to just look forward to uh, what you have uh, for us in eternity. And Lord, help us to trust your word. Father, I pray if there are those tonight that are not saved here, that, uh, that your Holy Spirit would, would uh, convict them in their hearts, and Lord, that they would be willing to turn to you. That by faith, they would yield their heart and life to you. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.